Hi guys, and welcome back. Today I'll be showing you how to design a manga page. Like a sir. In case you don't know me, hi, my name's Marcel, and I've drawn manga for six years myself. I published six volumes of my own manga series called Myth, and you guys wanted me to make videos about that very topic. So I've made videos about drawing manga pages, drawing fight scenes, designing characters, but today I thought we're gonna take a look at the very basis. How to panel and construct a manga page. How do you do that and what kind of mistakes do you want to avoid? I'm also gonna make a lot more videos about making manga. For example, how to ink your manga pages, how to add effects or screen tones, how do you publish your manga, and so on. And you can watch all of these videos if you subscribe, that way you'll get notified when I upload more manga videos. And in case you want to check out my manga, I translated all six volumes into English. They are available in my online shop right now, along with the slipcase I designed for it. Thank you very, very much for reading. I honestly appreciate it. And now let's take a look at how to panel, layout and construct a manga page. I already said this in my video about drawing manga pages, but this is a very big amateur mistake. You do not start out with drawing manga pages right away, you're drawing a storyboard first. This way you can plan the paneling out in beforehand, and in case something doesn't work out, you can just erase it, because, well, it's not a detailed drawing, changing things is still very easy here. That's how I've done it as well, I storyboarded every single panel before I drew it in order to be sure that what I'm drawing is laid out correctly. So keep that in mind before you draw basically anything because that's how pros do it as well. Having a rough idea and then making a detailed sketch in order to turn that into the finished manga page. Now, how do you lay out these panels? Your goal here is basically to draw a manga page that guides your viewer's eye through the story. If your reader doesn't know which panel to read next or where to continue, you failed at this. And in this video, I'll tell you how exactly you should lay out your panels. First, the most important rule when it comes to laying out a page is less is more. I know, especially in a fight scene, you want to go all out and portray a lot of action with a lot of panels, but to me, as a reader, this just looks all over the place. Instead, you might want to use fewer, bigger panels, which is a lot easier on the eyes. And also, this gives your artwork way more room to shine. You know, I like One Piece, I really do. I bought all of the volumes, but if you were to pick it up and flip through the manga and you saw this, I refuse to believe most people are looking forward to reading pages this jam-packed. Don't worry, if you want to draw detailed things or impressive backgrounds, you can. But you have to give it some space in order to let the details breathe. If you don't and you cram all of your artworks into small panels, your reader will get overwhelmed by it. So many modern manga make this mistake. The artwork is beautiful, but you can't tell up from down with these layouts. I showed this example before in my video about drawing fight scenes, but whether you're a fan of it or not, Dragon Ball made reading manga so simple. There were only four or five panels on each page and you immediately knew what was going on and really guided you through the story. Of course, there are also modern examples of this with very detailed artwork, like One Punch Man, for example. Its panels are very big and it gives the artwork more room to breathe. And now, I don't think I need to ask which page is easier to read, right? Let's also take a look and examine how these pages guide you through their respective story. While the One Punch Man one is absolutely self-explanatory, I feel like in order to read this manga page, you would need your own tour guide or something. Also, what you want to avoid as well are square panels. With these panels, your viewer won't have the slightest clue where to move next. Let's again take a One Punch Man page as an example. The spacing between these panels is slimmer, so you instinctively know that you need to read this way next. Spacing manga this way is actually pretty common, and you can definitely see why. Also, as you can see, manga is mostly laid out in a Z shape. 
That's why in this manga page I drew for example, you can see how the action mostly flows in a zigzag pattern. That's scientifically the best way to lay out your manga. You know, there's this theory out there called the Gutenberg diagram. It basically shows you how the human eye naturally prioritizes the flow of things. This is used in things like advertisements or in things like homepage design for ages now. So it only makes sense to incorporate this into your manga since it's objectively the best way to construct a page. Of course, there are exceptions, but this is basically a foolproof way of doing it. Also, as you saw before, there's a certain way to make the action in your manga flow. This right here happens via focus points. As you can see, I carefully placed these objects and characters in a way that they follow this zigzag pattern. Of course, I could have just placed these characters facing in another direction. But as you can see, this would kinda go against the flow. You could also utilize speech bubbles for this. And instead of showing you a good example, I'll be showing you a terrible one. <laughs> this manga page right here is from a manga called... Nope, nope, no, I'm not, I'm not even attempting to pronounce this one. I, re I refuse to even attempt that. You could have taken anything else's name, like anything else, didn't matter, but no, you had to be the special snowflake. Anyways, this layout itself is very contradictory, since its panels tell you to continue reading this way, while the narration bubbles and boxes tell you to read that way. I mean, come on, there's hentai with better paneling out there. Here's a page I drew, which I quite like. It's actually nothing special, just a scene with Poseidon and co at the dinner table, but I think it works pretty well with what I wanted to show you. So, let's examine this page in detail. You basically have these key points I talked about earlier, and the speech bubbles you add should complement your paneling. In this case, you can see how the speech bubbles are guiding your eye from one key point over to another. And even at the very bottom, they guide your eye right over to the next page. I really like when manga or comics are doing that. Speech bubbles are not just something that you have to incorporate somehow because it's mandatory, but instead you can get really creative with how you include them. And, like you just saw, if you do it in a good way, it even helps to improve your page flow. But if you do it in a bad way, well, you know. And now, if you maybe want to practice drawing an action or fight scene, I've already made a video about this topic as well. Like I said, there's a whole how to draw manga playlist on my channel. Check it out if you want to know more about how to draw your own comic or manga. Maybe you saw that this video was an insane amount of work, so I'd be very happy if you would leave a like as well as a comment in order to support me. You could also go the extra mile and support me via Patreon, or just instead check out the manga series I've drawn. Like I said, I did my best to translate all six volumes into English by now. On the bottom right corner, there's an icon where you can get them all. Well then, my name's Marcel, and I'm looking forward to see you guys when I upload my next video. Goodbye.